Okay. Yeah. So a fair bit of this is me just going to be running through. Because of the nature of the stands and everything, the game slows down quite a bit. And there's a lot of kind of encounters where they make things a lot more difficult to handle. So I'm going to kind of be avoiding certain uh, fights or certain areas. Uh, you notice we got a new one, Soldier Boy. Can you guess who that is? Oh yeah, it's this guy. It's our standard sword-wielding hollows. So let's see here, we got a normal slash. We got a stab. We got our wild flailing. Or really, it's just a two hit. And what do we got? Okay. And is that. Okay. Jumping attack. Okay. Some of the attacks are duplicates. Especially on the uh, more simple grunt enemies. But one thing that is or that this mod sort of shows you is that even the most basic enemies in this game have a fair amount of attacks associated with them. I see you there. Let's try this. There we go. One of the interesting things about this that I noticed in my testing of it, ow, jerk, is that you can often be deflected by an enemy's block, but because enemies will then let their guard down to attack you while you've been thrown open by the act of ah uh, Jesus I hate these guys without a shield enemies are always the most annoying things these ones are particularly annoying to me because they have extremely long reach and they are very well designed to just jab the hell out of you if you try to run past them or if you ever get you know, like, show your side or anything like that. Now, I'm not sure... I'm gonna look at something, because I just noticed something. What? You notice there's a little spell up thing I'm I've got there. Not sure why that is. It's like I'm wearing a ring that increases my spell of power or something like that. Not sure what that is. I have noticed that I feel weaker, not hugely substantially weaker, but I feel like I take damage more than I do normally. So maybe I have uh, the Dusk Crown Ring effectively on. I'm not sure if the Dusk Crown Ring has a noticeable drop of the HP bar or if it just makes you take more damage. It says you have 20% less health. But it wouldn't surprise me if it just if it gives you 20% less health, but it l still looks like the same HP bar. If they fudge that by making you take, you know, a, uh, an increased amount of damage. 
there's some systems and some setups in Dark Souls that are very sort of cobbled together in a very odd way. It's all like the poise in this game and how poise is not actually poise, but it is. It just only works at certain times. So, eh. That was all that caused all sorts of weird issues when the game originally launched, because you have a poise indicator, but it doesn't seem to do anything. People were very confused for a long time there. So I'm gonna bypass a lot of this garbage. Bypass the big uh, dragon man because the dragon mans are very annoying. Hop down here. Get shot in the shoulder. Nope. Forearm. Running stab, miss. Run down here. Duck through here. I'm only coming down here for the Estus Flask Shard. Yeesh. Got a throwing knife in me from somewhere. I'm gonna heal up real fast. And you can tell since I dumped all of my points into uh, Vigor, I have so much health that my flasks are effectively useless a lot of the time. Or not useless, I should say. They heal a very small fraction of my health. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now let's run through here. Snope is bad. Is bad. I chose the wrong path. I drank from the wrong cup. Okay, back up here. Uh, I noticed I got a new stand, one tin soldier, and judging by the sword there, it's probably one of these Lothric knights. I'm gonna open up this shortcut real fast. This shortcut, famously, not that much faster. All things considered. Faster, but not as huge as a lot of others. So, we're here. We've got our embered status. We've got no health. Let's see if we can beat a good old Bort of the Voreal Mally uh, in one go without any health. Let's try not to get fucking pasted by these ghouls here. Yoop. Hop off here. Roll. Roll. I'm gonna summon Swordmaster. I mean, we're doing this at two thirds health. I don't feel that bad using two-thirds health with no Estus. I don't feel bad summoning up the Swordmaster. Oh, come on. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Notice most of the... Most of the strong attack stand for your stands are lunging stabs. Which is great for us. You really want something that gives you some... some room. Unfortunately, as you can see, I am blocking my own stand again. There's been several times... Uh-oh. Oh, am I dead? Oh, nope. Barely not dead. Oh, 
There we go. So, that was close. That was a, a rousing bit of closeness. I'm not sure if Swordmaster actually did us any good there. Um, can I look at my health in this game? How much HP we got? Three! A whopping three HP! In some whopping blackface. Yeah. It's it's weird. The, the getting bloody code from Bloodborne is still in here. Oh, hey, look. My genderless crotch peeking through my my rap there quality uh the the getting blood on yourself code from bloodborne is in here but like scaled down and much less complex much less detailed you just kind of get covered in little splotches so i am going to come over here blah 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 purchase item one of those one of those one of those one of those one. Buy all that. Welcome. Put the rest of it into vigor. One. Okay. Take that. That's odd. That must be... Yeah. That must be some odd interaction with the mod. Can we still roll? Can indeed. I tell you that the fact that you have uh oh god damn it. Who's calling me? I no name? I don't care. If you're actually someone looking for me You'll call back. But I find it a little bit more obvious how there's a fast, uh, there's a fast, fast roll and a slow, fast roll in this game. Phew. Which is something I didn't know about. Oh, I'm not going to show it now. It's something I didn't know about for a long time because on the outset it looks like anything under 70% is a fast roll, but there's actually. A fast roll and uh, then there's a slower roll that while it has the same number of iframes apparently either doesn't travel as far or the animation doesn't finish quickly so now we've got some protection it's not very Jojo protection but uh, we don't really have access to anything silly yet we have to get the silliness from finding ourselves the Xanthus set, which is probably the most JoJo set. Alright. So now we have village people. Which... Okay, it's a standard villager. Okay, another firebomb. Boop. Now what's interesting to me here is that we have the the four pronged pitchfork as our our uh, sort of spell item there but the summoned man has the cleaver sort of thing which by the way is a weapon that I wish I could have gotten in this game really like the look of that cleaver Kind of looks like the Urukai cleaver, as if the, the point was on the other end. I've got 777 souls. Lucky me. Okay. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, yes, I did pass my boards. Oh, worker garb. Got an 87 on him, which is five points above national average. Not sure how the rest of my uh, group did. The guy who called me up got a similar score. So far, of everyone whose scores I know, everyone's been in the 
mid to high 80s, which is good. Uh, according to my teacher, the highest ranked school in the country is always up around that level. So if some, you know, some community college out in Nevada somewhere is getting ranked as high as a nationally known school, one of the first where they ever taught radiation therapy, we must be doing something, right? Maybe we were just good students, I don't know. I heard, I've heard worse things about other classes. Alright. So as you can tell, I'm just kind of blazing through here. Ah, uh, got a new one. Love Shack. And that one is probably one of these guys. But which one? Is he the pot one or the one with the big cleaver? I kind of hope for the pot, just because it's silly. Okay, cleaver. I can understand it. Because the pot probably has weird... I don't know. I don't want to say weird properties, but it's probably a little bit more difficult to use. This thing has very long range, very nice in that way. Okay. Uh, village people. I'm going to do village people for what's coming up here for a second, because I know there's a dog. There's a dog. Two dog. Ah, dog. Stay away from me, pet cemetery. Oh, God. Dogs are one of the worst with this. Because they are very nimble. There we go. They're very nimble. They're very difficult to pin down even when you're just normally swinging a sword. Let alone when you're trying to anticipate the the summoned sword swings of your get him okay the summon sword swings of your stand alliteration okay can I draw just the little rats on the big rat knows I'm here his head looked up ouch nipping at my heels And we are embered. I was gonna say enkindled. I think that's another another thing entirely. Um, so we by going over here we'll end up summoning Hodrick. Okay, and I think what it is and something I noticed that this guy here is missing and I think that he is our stand if that makes sense that he is literally been pulled and is kind of hanging around behind us to act as our stand I'm not sure how many stands you can get at a time. Okay, Hodrick. You're particularly annoying. You can poise through a lot of stuff with your fucking sword, especially if you use your your weapon art with any efficiency. Christ. Come on.
There we are. I don't know, did I combo that? Okay, that's interesting. You can kind of combo through their their attacks. If that makes sense. Like you can do this and then this and they'll connect up. I think if you do them yeah, they'll cancel each other. Okay. So we got Love Shack. He's a pretty good heavy hitter, slow but wide range. Essentially look kind of like having a great sword. Now, one of the the uh, gift I picked was the white branch so that I don't have to worry about this guy. Come on. There we are. I usually choose the white branch as my starting item. I don't know, all the others are kind of meh to me. This one has... It's not a very long-term benefit, so to speak. None of them are. Um, but... I like it because it lets you run through there real fast and get that... that bone shard, which is nice. Slow door open animation. And let's give old Curse Rotted a try. This may be difficult because there's so many guys hanging around in here. Pretty well. Oop. So I guess his backswing doesn't have a hitbox to it because it wouldn't run straight through that guy. One. I always try to get the majority of his pustules while we're in this early stage. It just helps with later later dealings because he becomes more dangerous in his second stage. Except for that. Oh, please move. Got a flask back for whatever reason. I think that's similar to the random humanities you would sometimes get back in DS1. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So we've got him past half. It's a good sign. There we go. Focus on this back one. Oh. Now I'll move around here real fast for this one. Ah, come on. What hit me there? Ah. 
as you can see, that was another one of those things of I was attacking and my stand was off fighting in an entirely different direction from where I was hitting. Hold on. Uh, excuse me. Not used to talking this much, honestly. Alright. I'm back to it. Actually, we'll do this. Faster this way. Travel here. And do a quick hop skip out onto the ground. Run to the room and do it. Obviously we don't need to do this. He's entirely optional, as far as I know. I always do him because the extra souls, why not? He's usually really easy. If you have a weapon, you can just swing away at him. Come on. Here we go. There's a lot of gimmick bosses in DS3. Not that big a fan. They're not terrible, don't get me wrong, but meh. They don't feel very Dark Soulsy. Which I know is a bit silly of a thing to say. There's gimmick bosses in literally every Dark Souls game. Right back to Demon Souls with... What was it? Dragon God. Great middle band name. In fact, so great of a metal band name that I will be extremely surprised if one doesn't exist already with that name. And this guy's a real pain in the ass because he's dodgy. Yeah, I'm going to try this. There we are. Yeah, the biggest difficulty for stand fighting is enemies that move around a lot. Especially small ones. You saw you saw it with the the dogs. Now you're seeing it here, where it's like trying to just get a good a good swing in on him. Okay, off you go. Okay, that's one. You. You. Shit. Oop. You. There we are. Now you. There we go. That's much better. This. Now we need. I'm gonna go for the back again. It's unfortunate he's in this corner here because this backwards fall thing is actually great to get a pustule on his elbow there. Unfortunately his elbow is clipping through a wall so it doesn't do us much good. Slam the hand down there. Yikes. That's what killed me last time. 
So let's keep relatively full. Come on. I think the problem here is that his attacks are hitting... His attacks are only have one hit frame, or I don't want to say hit frame, but like they only hit once. They don't hit in a... series? Okay, why am I not getting my village people? Shit, come on. Some reason village people doesn't want to activate. I was thinking maybe they would be better for this. Ouch, come on, come on, out of the goo. Oh dear. He goes down. Okay, maybe we should just focus on the hand. It's a dangerous thing to do because... Ah, oh, come on. Because the hand area there is the most... Effectively just the most dangerous. It does the most attacks and has kind of the most range and swiping and everything else. But it paid off.